exciting skyline of metropolitan Dallas as a backdrop. The campus of Southern Methodist University is a green and gracious oasis of learning. Not to mention some of the leggiest, loveliest co-eds this side of, well, anywhere. Today, Sunday, May 14th, 1972, SMU is the setting for an event destined to take its place among the most dramatic and memorable clashes in the annals of sport. One generally hailed, with only token argument from the old timers, as the greatest tennis match of all time. To the crowd that packs Moody Coliseum, to the national television audience of aficionados for the world's fastest growing sport, this is the eagerly awaited equivalent of boxing's rematch between Dempsey and Tunney, or Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali. The second meeting at the summit of the two racket kings who fought it out to a four-set fairly well in last year's world championship of tennis. Dramatic, climactic, but far from inevitable. Six other finalists had come to Dallas the hard way, beating out the toughest competition to become the top WCT point winners in 20 grueling tournaments held round the world. Tom Ocker, the Netherlands. Marty Reason, USA. Arthur Ashe, USA. John Newcomb, Australia, who won his place in the very last tournament, edging out such great stars as Roy Emerson, Passarell, and Roger Taylor. Bob Lutz, USA. Cliff Drysdale, South Africa. All of them out to topple top-seeded Rod Laver, first tennis player ever to win over a million dollars in prize money, and the 37-year-old phenomenon, agile, ageless Ken Rosewall, reigning world champion of tennis. His first test in the quarterfinals, young and powerful Bob Lutz, all matches best three out of five sets. Roswell takes the first set, 6-1. Lutz, the second set, 6-3. Roswell the third, also 6-3. Lutz wins the fourth, ties it up, two sets all. And the fifth set decides it. Lutz falters, and Roswell rolls over him 6-1 to move into the semis. Ash serves to Walker, a big ace. When Arthur's first serve is hot, nobody on the tour can touch him, because his whole game catches fire. Ocker, who beat Ash handily in the finals of Chicago's Kemper International Tournament, never really gets into it. Shows only a few flashes of his customary brilliance. Ash wins it in three scintillating sets, 6-4, 6-1, 6-3. Cliff Drysdale's trademark, that devastating two-fisted backhand, wreaks havoc against Marty Reason. Catapults him in front two sets to zero. A lapse in concentration by Drysdale, and a spectacular turnaround takes place. Reason takes three sets running, really running, and assures his spot in the semifinals against the winner of Labor versus Newcomb. Hard-fought match, but not a long one. A single service break in each set settles it. But unluckily for John, all three of them go to Rod. takes this one straight, 6-4, 6-4, In the pool of the Dallas Hotel, where the WCT finalists are staying, Tom Ocker splashes away the sting of defeat with a real water baby. 
while his wife, Anne Marie, watches the action with merry labor. Rod's adversary tonight, Marty Reason, with his beautiful wife, Sally, taking time out to relax after his five set struggle with Drysdale before the upcoming crucial semifinals. Arthur Ashe, Ken Rosewall. A packed house watches them battle for a place in the finals. has lost his magic touch. Rosewall wins the first two sets, 6-4, 6-3. But Ash surges back in the third. out for a sportsmanlike gesture of appreciation for Rosewall's great try. Six games all, and they go into a 12-point tiebreaker. Can Ash turn it around this late in the day? No way. Rosewall takes seven straight points for his third straight set and a shot at his second straight World Championship of Tennis title. Will his opponent be Marty Reason or once again Rod Labor? The way it starts out, the chance for history to repeat itself is strictly a long shot because Reason is right on. the first two sets, 6-4, 6-4, just like Labor took Newcomb. And now he's drawing for three of a kind. But Labor has some aces up his sleeve. With that rematch against Rosewall, and the only title yet to elude him as an incentive, he starts turning the tide. He destroys a tiring reason in the last three sets, 6-1, 6-2, 6 love. And so the stage is set for the confrontation in the finals that everyone wants to see. The big one between the big two, Labor and Rosewall. Since Ken won last year's championship in a four-set cliffhanger, Rod had concentrated his attention on turning the tables here, the ultimate test for both of them. whose ability and stamina have won them a permanent place among the unforgettable stars of all sports. Referee Tony Trabert spins the racket. Rosewall wins the serve. And then the first of 355 points, which will be bitterly fought for tooth, nail, and racket before this marathon epic is concluded. goes to labor, a service break. Couldn't be a worse start for Rosewall. And here, in slow motion, the ballet-like beauty and grace of the sport is fully revealed. Four 
flavor, giving every indication that he can crush his Aussie countrymen as easily as in their other two meetings this year. But it isn't that easy. Ken serve gets in the groove to make it 4-1. In the next game, it's his advantage. Right now, he can break Labor back. It doesn't work out that way. Labor wins the point and goes on to hold serve, gaining a 5-1 edge. This fiercely contested point, he takes the next one for a service break. 5-4 now. Ken is coming back strong and has his second service break opportunity. A magnificent lob, but Rod, always the aggressor, takes the offensive on what would be a defensive shot for most of us mortals. Turns back Ken here and goes on to take the first set 6-4. golden incentive, this gleaming symbol, spurring them on to that last extra effort that is the pride of the champion. Labor wins the point, but this just isn't his set. Ken wins five straight games, and here in the sixth, has his fourth opportunity to break Rod serve and whitewash him in the set. He does it, and the score seems unreal both to the crowd and to Ken. To win a set six low against Rod is something that doesn't happen too often. Hollywood's Jim Franciscus, a confirmed tennis addict himself, marvels at Rosewall's incredible resilience. First game, third set. backhand get. But Rosewall coolly lays it in the other corner. Incredibly, Labor reaches the ball. Add to Rosewall, really beginning to sweat this one out. Rosewall leads 5-3 now. 40 love, set point and Labor fights to stay in it. How does he do it? That Labor wrist action is one of the marvels of the game, but it's still set point. sets to one. If he takes this set, he wins the match from Labor. Another Rod named Steiger, quite an award winner himself, roots for his namesake to get back in it. Changed my rackets after the third set, and uh, my serve seemed to come back a little bit better then. Uh, but sometimes it's better to serve badly against him than just to play what serve well against him. Serve fast, serve at him, he comes back faster. Rosewall three games, Labor two. Rod storms back to face Ken with a service break at 15.40. Well, that's one of the things that Rod does, where you feel you've got him in a match and he comes back. After another labor break, it's 5-4 his favorite, Rosewall leading 15 love. He moves in for the volley, only to be driven back by a great lob. But his equally great return pins labor to the service line. Ken moves in again to make a crisp volley to keep labor back. But then Rod takes the offensive pulls Ken over and back with a down-the-line corker. A terrific lob, and a magnificent get from Rod, but he's too far out of position. Chess, played with rackets and split-second precision, that's the quintessence of tennis. 
Rosewall pulls even at five games all. Then Labor holds serve and leads 6-5. Rosewall fights to even it up at six games all and a chance to win it in the tiebreaker. Now it's 40-15. It's six all and the set goes into sudden death. If Ken wins the tiebreaker, it's all over. Seven points is all it takes with at least a two-point margin. The Rosewall touch. He leads too low. Two all. Three two labor, and he takes the next one. Four two labor. Five two now goes down to the wire. Labor leading 6-3. One more point will give him the set. Labor wins it. This incredible match goes well over the three-hour mark, and network television preempts show after show to stay right with it. As an ever-growing audience, dial-hopping fans of other sports get caught up in the drama of these two extraordinary Australians fighting it out to a fantastic finish. Can Rosewall's 37-year-old legs carry him through? It just doesn't seem possible. but he breaks Labor's serve in the second game and goes into the fourth with a 3-1 lead. 15-40, break point. <laughs> 30-40. But Labor staves off disaster and brings it back to Deuce. advantage now, but Ken takes the next two points to face him with another break. How long can he keep this up? Labor's ad. He must take this game. Deuce again, but Rod is not to be denied. On the 17th point of this seesaw struggle, he gets the advantage. And now, Rosewall leads, 3-1. 4-2 Rosewall now, but he's down love 40. Rosewall pull this one out of the fire? No. Rod breaks serve, and now Rosewall leads 4-3. The match rolling past the three and a half hour mark. Labor wins a love game, and it's even at 4-4. Let's look at that incredible shot again. Labor hits a winner going away. Not too many players in the world can duplicate that one. Rosewall holds serve, and Labor has to follow suit just to stay alive. Love 15. Fifteen all. I was hoping Rod would serve my backhand there. Thought that I'd, I'd give that a bit of a shot. Ken takes it to 30-40 match point. Labor's back is against the wall. Rod survives the crisis to take the game, but Ken holds serve to lead 6-5. And in the crucial 12th game, Rob is still under the gun. He must hold serve. 30-15. Rosewall takes 
the next point and its labor's advantage. Now almost everyone in the vast crowd is rooting for him. It seems not only fitting but absolutely essential that this match go down to a fifth set tiebreaker to cap its ever mounting drama with a climax of almost unbearable suspense. Sudden death tiebreaker. Twelve crucial points will decide who will be the world champion of tennis 1972. Labor going strong. Rosewald down to the last precious ounce of his flagging energies. One apiece. Two one labor. Three one labor. Roswell looks like he's had it. Three two labor. A double fault. Labor's big serve, which had failed him too often through the match, betrays him again when it counts the most. big ones to polish Ken off. That ball must weigh a ton. Five four labor. The audience is hushed, expectant. Ken girds himself for Rod's big serve. set, unbelievably even. A blistering backhand return down the line. The shot heard round the tennis world. And now it's Ken who needs just one more. Two points difference between these two tennis immortals after playing for three hours and 45 minutes. As Mike Davies, executive director of World Championship Tennis, says in his presentation. That is probably the greatest tennis match that I have ever seen in my life. There should have been two winners out there today. And in fact, tennis and the public really came out the winner today. What else is there to say? The 1972 World Champion of Tennis, Mr. Ken Rosewell. I'm just about out of breath. We're just about all out of time. I'm very happy about winning. I'm sorry that there can't be two winners, too. Ken Rosewall, age 37, for the second consecutive year, the world champion of tennis. But the runner-up is a great and gallant competitor nobody can keep down. Rocket Rod is ready for the next one. Well, I always say third time lucky, so everybody better look out next year.